Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Zomato Limited's Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. From Zomato's management team, we have with us today Akshan Goyal, Chief Financial Officer, Alvinder Singh Dinsa, Founder and CEO of Blinkit, and Kunal Swaroop, Head of Investor Relations. Before we begin, a few quick announcements for the attendees. Anything said on this call, which reflects outlook for the future, or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement, may involve risks and uncertainties. Such statements or comments are not guarantees of future performance, and actual results may differ from those statements. Additionally, please note that this earnings call is scheduled for a duration of 45 minutes, and we will be starting directly with the Q&A section of the call. If you wish to ask a question, please use the raise hand feature available on your Zoom dashboard. We will announce your name on the call and unmute your line, post which you can proceed with your question. We will wait for a minute while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Mr. Sachin Salgonkar from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congrats for a great set of numbers. I have a first a few questions. First question, just wanted to understand, you know, the increase in food take rate. Uh, obviously, we see in a sharp increase. I presume a part of it is on the back of platform fees and a part of it is on, you know, the organic take rate increases what you guys are doing. Possible to help uh, that breakout and, you know, a bit of a uh, idea in terms of, you know, how should one expect that to move ahead? Yeah, it's uh, it's not a very, sh I mean, there is some increase and uh, we don't, we can't share uh, the split of the various components of that increase for competitive reasons, as you know, uh, Sachin. But, um, you know, largely, you know, I, I we, we could say that partly the introduction of the platform fee help. Uh, and, uh, you know, slightly better performance on ad monetization also helped. Got it. And, you know, Kunal, while you guys were experimenting on the platform fee, is it now fair to assume to say that, you know, this is now here to stay and this will continue? Look, we keep experimenting. Yes, uh, it is here to stay as of now. The quantum, etc. we'll keep experimenting and fine-tuning as we go along. Got it. Uh, second question, uh, you know, is regarding the loyalty program and thanks for sharing the unit economics on Zomato Gold. Uh, given that, you know, it's so effective for you guys, was wondering if you are thinking of a similar loyalty program on the Blinkit front? Uh, nothing as, as of now, Sachin. Okay. Uh, and, you know, again, in the past, you guys were thinking about launching one more app, uh, which is dining out. Uh, any incremental updates on that? Uh, no, Sajin, nothing at this point. Uh, we're still sort of debating that internally. Got it. Uh, and Blinkit AOV clearly had a sharp increase. I presume a part of it is on the back of some of the iPhones you guys sold as well as, you know, electronics. Again, possible to understand, you know, how to look at this going ahead. You know, uh, obviously you guys said that, you know, it will be fluctuating going ahead. But directionally, given the mix of electronics, should we expect that to increase a bit going ahead? Uh, such in the AOV that we report, it excludes the GO, GOV that we get from the iPhone sale. We only include it in the revenue that we make from uh, the sales of iPhones. We don't in include the GMV because that will skew the AOV unnecessarily. Uh, okay. And uh, the overall AOV movement, like you said, right, like it's dependent on a lot of factors. Product uh, mix is the biggest one, obviously. Uh, and... Uh, Right now, there is, I don't think there is a significant swing based on as any of the new categories that we've added. Right. I think it's just and business as usual. Yeah. Business as usual. Yeah. And apart from iPhone, anything else you guys strip from, uh, you know, this entire uh, GOV, what you guys report? No, no. Got it. And last question is, you know, on, uh, you know, bookkeeping. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, depreciation, amortization reduced uh, this quarter. And ESOPs also increased, uh, you know, on a QOQ basis. Anything to read out there? Yeah, look, the depreciation, uh, a large component of that is due to the intangible assets as part of the uh, acquisition that we made for Blinkit. 
uh, now part of that intangible asset had a one year uh, sort of depreciation cycle so that piece is out and therefore uh, the depreciation that you saw is uh, slightly lower and on the question on the esop piece yes uh, there is been a little bit of an increase but uh, uh, you know we broadly expect to end at the guidance of 450 crores that we gave for the year of fy24 Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Ankur Rudra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. And again, congratulations to for the quarter in terms of the profitability and the growth here. Uh, maybe starting with the food side, uh, you know, uh, clearly nice to see the monetization from platform fees which is seems to have helped your uh, take rates to an extent how do you think about user behavior as a combination of uh, both the user delivery charges and platform fees do you think uh, there is a limitation in terms of how much you can optimize this uh, do users start thinking of uh, the two together because obviously the uh, the delivery charges have been falling uh, because of your gold program um, but do you think this is a one one limiting point that beyond the point you can't optimize it? Yeah, I encore. Uh, so I think like the two things here. One, I think uh, the platform charge right now is fairly nominal, right? So I don't think like uh, it it really uh, right now shows up in uh, uh, any demand elasticity from a consumer standpoint. Uh, also, because uh, I think. Uh, uh, the competition, the other aggregators are also charging it right now, right? So we were the sort of like follower here. So even from a comparison standpoint, uh, uh, it's something that customers were already uh, paying on the other platform, one of our largest competitor. So hence, I think in this quarter, as we've rolled out the platform fee, we we haven't seen a, a meaningful impact on, on demand uh, elasticity. Understood. Um, on uh, the Blinkade side, again, good to see store break even given that your addition rate appears to suggest 8% or so net ads for the next two quarters. And you've already, you know, achieved break even. Uh, what prevents you from achieving, you know, profit break even much faster than your stated target? I think uh, it's just, uh, you know, we're seeing a trend of increasing margins in the business and uh, order volume is also increasing, which basically helps us with contribution profit. Right. So there is, uh, I think this is more of equation of, you know, when these two lines meet, uh, that we will be able to just break even. So I don't think we are looking at it as what is build a long-term sustainable business rather than what helps us get there faster, because we want to take the kind of calls, which also help our business grow into the future year, two years, three years down the line. So there is a fair bit of, I think, new store addition, uh, Ankur, which is yet to happen. Right. And, uh, we've alluded to that in one of the questions. So I think that will be a short term drag on the margins and hence on balance uh, the guidance that we've given on break even is uh, first quarter of next financial year but uh, theoretically if we were to not open any new store uh, from now on then of course yes we can get to break even much sooner no i understood i was just saying that you know your addition rate is effectively around eight percent i mean the 69th story you're, you're planning to add for the next two quarters and if you grow at the rate you're growing um the incremental contribution margins from the new stores uh, or the incremental hit from contribution margins from the new stores will be compensated by the profitability you'll get from the existing stores it just look like maybe you get there faster but fair enough uh last question on you know your free cash flow has been positive now for the first half and probably for uh, you know two q i mean first one q as well Given where you are, any change in thoughts on uh, capital allocation, new areas, newer areas of spending going forward, including potentially return of cash or, or large acquisitions again? Uh, nothing, Ankur. No, no update or no uh, at this point. Uh, we haven't really uh, thought of anything yet. Okay. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Vijay Jain from City. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Uh, great set of numbers again. Uh, my question is on the loyalty program pricing. Uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, how are you thinking about the pricing here? Uh, you, one can see that the pricing for renewals and new signups uh, Q1 
keep changing. Uh, so how uh, is, is it fair to say that competitive activity in terms of how you, uh, is currently focused mostly on the loyalty program side and how you think about gaining market share, meeting profitability, etc. And also, um, um, you know, obviously your competitor has a slightly different loyalty program versus you. Is that aiding you in any way, in any way, in any form? Thank you. Hi, Vijit. So I think like uh, Zomato Gold pricing is a business call uh, and it depends on various factors, including competition. Uh, also, I think it's a fairly new program. So we're still discovering uh, what is the right way of pricing it and learning uh, with every passing month and quarter. So, uh, so yeah, I think that sort of we'll, we'll keep doing that. And as we mentioned in our letter, idea is to make sure that uh, we keep our service uh, affordable for our customers and at the same time uh, create incentive for them to uh, be uh, loyal to our platform. And so far, I think that that is shaping up well. Thanks, Akshan. And Akshan, just related to that, if I, I mean, you, thanks for disclose, that disclosure, which says, uh, you know, share of gold, uh, GOV went from 33% to 40% QOQ. If I do that math, it seems to suggest that non gold would have even declined. Uh, so, uh, are you mainly converting existing users into gold or is there a fair degree of, uh, you know, brand new customers getting onto uh, Zomato and uh, signing up for gold right away? No, so, see, new customers is a very small portion of our business. Uh, the new user addition is fairly constant and consistent with the past trends. So majority of the therefore incremental gold members are, I would say, are existing uh, customers. Got it. So my, my last question here is, uh, you know, just the overall marketing spends this quarter it went up uh, uh, about 13, 14 percent odd uh, for the first time in a while. Uh, so if you could give a broad sense of uh, where that was spent and uh, also on the salary side, it went up 20 percent. I understand this is a wage hike thing, uh, but anything else to call out on that? Or is September 23 the trend run rate for both? Yeah, I would say September 23 is the trend run rate for both. Uh, on the marketing side, I think largely in the last quarter, uh, we underspent on Blinkit, this quick commerce mm -hmm. business, and the disruption we had, uh, and hence uh, for a large part of the last quarter, our marketing efforts were muted, uh, and hence you see an increase right now. And uh, likewise on the employee cost bit, I think it's largely to do with the annual increments in our business, which happens in September quarter, and hence the number that you see I think is is more representative of uh, what it's going to be going forward. Got it. Thanks. Thank you so much. Those were my questions. Welcome. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Manish Adukia from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Uh, most of my questions are around growth across both food delivery and uh, Blinkit. Now, firstly, just Akshant wanted to get clarification. I think in the shareholder letter, you've mentioned that uh, you're expecting 25 to 30 percent uh, YY growth next quarter in the food delivery business. Uh, but you also said that it will be high single digit and you called it moderate. So just want to understand, I mean, high single digit or 25 to 30 percent seems like a pretty good number. Uh, you're calling it moderate because you're not happy with that number and you think there's further upside to that growth number. Just wanted to get a clarification. No, I think we're calling it moderate because I heard a lot of people from sales side expecting a 15, 20 percent growth in that quarter. So right. we, we, we felt our our uh, business plan here is relatively moderate compared to what the uh, uh, sales side was expecting. So we just wanted to call that out. Thank you for clarifying. Helpful. Uh, the second one, uh, just again, maybe if you can give additional color, uh, Albinder or Akshant on the Blinkit number, very strong growth this quarter. And you've mentioned that next quarter you expect growth uh, to remain high. So again, should we think about that in terms of the quarterly run rate that you've been doing in terms of growth, that kind of growth can be maintained? Is that what you're alluding to when you say growth rate to be high? Yeah, I think, I mean, somewhere in the same range, we are uh, expecting that, you know, that is the BAU sort of growth that we've been witnessing in the business so far. So Got that's it. kind of a for as well. Got it. Helpful. Uh, and on Blinkit, staying on Blinkit, uh, so I think you've also mentioned that new city expansion, which has so far not been a focus area, now you'll selectively be looking at uh, that as well from a growth driver perspective. So the next one to two years, uh, would you be able to give any sense as to how many new cities you could potentially expand into? So Manish, I think even in the past, we've been 
doing this selectively. So it's not like we'll right. start doing uh, going forward. So we have uh, opened a, like a store or two each in some cities just to test the depth of market in the country in general. And I think overall, uh, uh, I, I would say that we've been pleasantly surprised with the demand for this service uh, across cities, which are much smaller than the cities that we have a meaningful business in. So I think, you know, with that, uh, in the same spirit, I think the idea is to continue testing few more markets, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a meaningful portion of uh, the overall size of the business uh, in the short term. But this is more to sort of build uh, growth channels for much longer term. Got it. Helpful. And my last question again on Blinkit. Uh, you've mentioned that in some cities, uh, Blinkit's UV is already more than that of uh, Zomato. Um, would you be able to give us any sense maybe level or let's say at a catchment area level, what's the maximum ratio of Blinkit GOV to Zomato GOV? Just trying to get a sense that let's say from a five to 10 year perspective, like you call out, this could be much larger. What kind of scale or ratio are we potentially looking at? Yeah, at this point, there are cities where uh, the ratio is uh, in the one to two X range, right? So it's not order of magnitude higher than Zomato, but I think the trend line would suggest that that could change in future. Got it. Helpful. Thank you so much for taking my questions. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Gaurav Rateria from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, am I audible? Yeah, Gaurav. Hi. Uh, uh, hey, hi. Uh, thanks for taking question. A uh, couple of questions. The first, uh, where did the contribution margin improvement come from in the food business? Because it appears that the take rate improvement got more than offset by the increase in delivery cost. Yeah, Gaurav, like, like we mentioned earlier in one of the questions that was asked, the same question was asked earlier as well. Uh, the incremental uh, margin was uh, came in from things like the platform fee and ad monetization. Uh, and that kind of uh, made up, more than made up for the decrease in the delivery charges that you saw. Uh, my question was like, wouldn't it already be part of your take rate? Uh, my question was that the take rate increase after taking into consideration all of these revenues have got more than offset by the increase in delivery cost. So what are the elements that really drove the increase in contribution margin? So the contribution margin is increased by, uh, I think, like 10 basis points, right? 20 basis points. 5 percent. <laughs> Uh, uh, 6.4 to uh, 6.4% to 6.6%. Correct. So, so uh, sorry, yeah, the, your question is not clear. I think so. What we're trying to say is that the contribution margin increased as a result of, I think, uh, in, uh, more revenue per order. And some part of that increase in revenue per order got offset with increasing cost, uh, given, of course, the fact that uh, uh, this is a seasonally, uh, I mean, a, a quarter where there is rains and, and, and hence we know, and we plan for increase in delivery costs. So that happened, but net net as a result of the two, the contribution margin still increased by about 20 basis point. Got it. Second, uh, gold members are already at, uh, 20% of the total MTCs. Is there any theoretical limit where it starts picking out? Uh, no, I don't think so, right? Because it's not like uh, there is a trade-off here uh, in any way between gold and non-gold members, right? In terms of the benefit, uh, you know. But I think we do expect, having said that, that we do expect the pace of gold membership increase here to slow down from here on, because of course, like uh, these are usually the more frequent customers who who want to become members. So from here on, the pace might uh, definitely slow down. Okay. A uh, third question on quick commerce, uh, how long typically a new store takes to come to break even at the contribution margin level or put this same question in another way. If you look at last quarter, what could have been the drag from the new store additions on your contribution margins? I got a, uh, there is, see, this is still a very, very nascent market with like very deep penetration. So depending on whether we are opening stores uh, in localities where we already had the store and we are opening new ones, the, the break even might be really, really quick. Uh, we are going into a new locality altogether in the city where we exist. It will be a different number. We are going to an entirely new city altogether. It will be an entirely different number, right? So there is no one number we can point to and say that this is how long it takes for our store. 
uh, to break even. And when we look at the break even of the store, we are looking at all the costs, including you know what we have to do to supply the store as well. So I don't think there is uh, that is something that we even talk about or disclose that you know this is sort of the average time that it takes for us to open a store, right? Um, in terms of uh, your second question, that you know. I think the number of stores that we opened uh, the you know this quarter, uh, I don't think that it was a meaningful drag because once we start the stores, some of them lie in the first bucket where we are opening in existing localities. Uh, but we don't think that the drag was meaningful. It was uh, offset by the increase in the overall margin of our existing stores. Got it. The last question is a uh, what's the synergy we have achieved already from hyper pure and blinkered businesses and uh, you know what's the potential thank you yeah so uh, i think uh, the synergy is uh, largely on the infrastructure side uh, you know uh, because the warehouses and the sourcing uh, 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 relationship we have for hyper pure uh, uh, is sort of like becomes one and this is especially true on the uh, fruits and vegetables fresh produce side where uh, you know, we're going back to the farmers or farmer producer organization to source uh, the, the, these uh, products from them, right? So I think at least on that part, I would say that the two businesses are fairly joined at the hips and, and that has helped us build, a, uh, that has helped us actually offer a much higher quality FNV at great prices to our customers, uh, which is uh, very important, uh, uh, not just from the margin standpoint, but also because it, Fresh um, is usually an entry point for a lot of our new customers, right? So having, giving them a good experience on, on on this category really helps us with higher retention down the line. So I think that way is, um, I think I would say that sort of all that integration and synergies is fairly well realized by now at this point. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Swapnil Porduke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is with respect to the gold orders. Uh, so I would like to understand, like on a per order basis, has there been any increase in, uh, you know, investments that you do in the gold? Because uh, 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 my sense is that uh, we saw some fluctuation in the gold prices during the quarter, and there has been also some uh, free uh, membership rollouts uh, through various tie-ups. Uh, so. So, so, so basically, on a per order basis, gold order, or does it uh, uh, does it have a higher dilutive impact on an absolute basis compared to the previous quarter? Is the question? Yeah. So, like Sopnil, we would not want to disclose that because this, I think, uh, is part of the strategy of how we invest in growing the business, right? So, uh, I would not want to share specific details to your question, but in general, I think what you've pointed out is that one. Uh, the overall gold membership base is increasing for us. And to the, the fact that gold orders today are lower contribution margin than non-gold, that is a fact as well. And third, I would say is that going forward, I think part of our incremental margins from here on in the business will perhaps come from reducing the uh, impact, negative impact the amount of gold order has on the overall PNL, right? So I think that's that's all that we can share at this point. Sure. Uh, uh, the second question is with respect to the uh, the contribution of ad income to your take rates. Now uh, we have been uh, calling out and saying that this uh, uh, the uh, ad income has been one of the drivers of your uh, take rates for some time now. Now uh, uh, one way to look at it is like the uh, macros are challenging for restaurants and they are spending more. Uh, yeah. What happens uh, once the uh, macros ease? Uh, uh, would we see a reversal in the contribution of ad, in, ad income to your take rates? That's possible, Abhinav. We don't know that yet, but that's possible. Okay. Uh, and uh, another question on ad income uh, is with respect to uh, quick commerce. Uh, so now we have the uh, World Cup going on. Uh, have you seen any uh, sharp increase in ad spends by brands on quick uh, on Blinkit uh, platform per se? And if yes. Uh, 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 can you talk about the sustainability of that uh, trend? Uh, I think Swapnil, if uh, any of they are not obviously visible in the Jazz quarter because most of the games, actually the World Cup started sort of after that, right? So uh, I would not say that there was uh, any impact, meaningful impact in the September. 
And usually like, uh, you know, we have regular ad spends from brands for different events, activities, which keep happening throughout the year. Uh, so there is nothing abnormal in terms of ad spends when brand spends at that time on the platform. I think it's fairly in line with what the usual spends are. It's just that, you know, some brands might be up during some month and the others might not be. Okay. And just a last one on the ESOP side. Uh, there was a sharp Q and Q improvement in ESOP cost. Now I understand that that's, uh, that also may be a, a fact uh, because of the increase in the share price. Uh, uh, but uh, we have given a guidance of around 4.5 billion uh, spends towards uh, ESOP for the full year. Uh, any uh, any change in your guidance or or uh, 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 how should we look at the cost from a next year perspective as well? Uh, if you can answer that, that would be great. Thanks. So on your first question, uh, FY24, we should uh, ballpark end at the uh, similar to the number that we've given as, uh, in our guidance. So I don't think we'll we'll be very off from the 4.5 billion number. On FY25, we are not uh, giving any guidance yet. Sure. Uh, no worries, Kuno. Uh, thanks a lot for this uh, opportunity and good luck to you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the Dino Mr. Abhishek Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, congratulations on the numbers. Uh, really uh, uh, excellent performance. So in terms of uh, your platform fees, uh, what would be the attachment rate as in what proportion of orders are you charging platform fees right now? So Abhishek, uh, essentially we introduced the uh, platform Almost fee the during the, well, the orders have the platform fee. Now. Sorry, uh, you were not audible to me. Could you just repeat that? Like, uh, uh, all the orders now, I think uh, almost 100% of the orders have a platform fee now. Perfect. Uh, in terms of the ad revenue monetization that you spoke about, how is that increasing? Is it on the basis of more restaurants advertising or is it that um, the existing restaurants are advertising more or have you actually increased uh, the realization of, uh, you know, uh, from per ad or per click? Uh, if you could uh, help us understand that. Yeah, so in the last year or so, uh, I would say majority of the ad income increase has come as a result of more advertisers or more restaurants uh, spending money on ads. Uh, and uh, a little bit of that is also because of the increase in uh, pricing from our side, right? But I would say majority is driven by the volume increase. And that holds true for this quarter as well. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Now, uh, you have hinted about uh, user behavior change post becoming gold members in the shareholder letter. Now, uh, from some basic analysis, I can see almost, uh, you know, gold members ordering seven to eight times uh, per month, vis-a-vis -vis maybe uh, two and a half, three times for uh, people who are regular users but don't have uh, gold membership. Now, uh, do you actually see uh, these people who are becoming gold members moving to that seven, eight kind of an average number. And if so, what, what is the time frame that this plays out, uh, from, from your understanding? Uh, so Abhishek, I think part of this frequency jump that you're alluding to is also a result of, uh, essentially like multiple users starting to order from just like one account, uh, right? So. We see this trend where uh, the orders consolidate into one account just because one person has bought the membership. So, so therefore, this this delta in frequency I would not fully attribute to just uh, uh, the user becoming a member. Uh, there is a decent bit of an uptick, uh, organic and sustainable uptick in frequency, but the order of magnitude will be much smaller than what you what you mentioned. Understood. Understood. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, MTU increases, uh, that is basically coming from the large number of uh, annual transacting users who would probably be ordering once a year or once a month, uh, once a quarter earlier, and now they're moving into the MTU base. Is that uh, understanding correct? Yes, that's right. And also we are acquiring new customers every month. So part of that is also 
uh, driving the increase. Understood. Uh, uh, on on the working capital front, uh, there was a reduction again this quarter and pretty sizable. So, uh, could you just uh, give us some understanding on how that came through, given the you know sharp growth rates uh, that you have shown? Yeah, uh, like we mentioned in the past also, Abhishek, uh, essentially uh, working capital swings uh, be happen because of the day on which the quarter ends. Uh, so the last quarter, June 30th, ended on a Friday. This quarter, 30th September, ended on a Saturday, uh, which meant that we carried one more day of tables on our books, which increased the mm -hmm. current liability and which reduced the net working capital, right? Because we have a weekly settlement cycle around the middle of the week. So depending on, you know, which day the quarter ends, therefore could have an impact on the uh, massive impact on the working cap networking capital. Got it. But if I look at the uh, various businesses, right, Blinkit uh, also operates on a seller model, right? So is, is there any meaningful difference in the working capital intensity in Blinkit and food delivery? And, you know, as Blinkit grows faster, do you see the working capital requirements uh, reduce further or or is it just the other way around? So there, there's not much of a difference. Uh, the slight, uh, we'll have to see the, on the other side, uh, advertising income can uh, increase the working capital due to some receivables, right? Okay. Uh, now, yeah. but, but as such, we don't see much of a difference on the food delivery and blanket side. What will cause a little bit of difference is hyperpure because they're, uh, you know, inventory and receivables uh, will increase slightly due to scale. Uh, but order of magnitude, I think food delivery and Blinkit are uh, the large businesses and they will continue to drive this trend, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. Got it. So just, just to understand one point that you mentioned. So advertising business, basically you do not collect the money upfront. Is it not a budget allocated by the restaurant? Yes, it depends. And part of it is uh, uh, advanced payments, but I think a larger part is uh, postpaid. Uh, you know, once you sort of reconcile accounts and uh, uh, as against uh, the greed uh, targets. And so therefore, I think a majority of the ad income uh, is postpaid and hence adds to the working capital. Good. Now, uh, coming to Blinkit, uh, in the uh, in terms of the customer charges, uh, would you would you be able to give us some clarity on how that has moved? Uh, I don't think we're providing that uh, uh, providing that information, uh, but uh, they have not moved significantly over the Very last. Very consistent, yeah. Nothing special and, about. That. Understood. And and just one last question on the AOV range for Blinkit. I know you. Uh, mentioned that uh, it, it fluctuates, but is there now any sense of a broad range which you think is a you know best case and a worst case uh, kind of guide like, guide reel for us? Uh, I don't think that we still uh, are we do want to commit to a number uh, right away. I think ours is still a fast growing business, and I think we're still in a fairly early stage of uh, figuring these things out. So I think we will okay. let it play out and see see where it goes. Sure, sure. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks so much for the time and, and uh, best of luck for the next quarter. I hope that's even better. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Ashwin Mehta from Ambit. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, so two questions. Uh, uh, one, in terms of uh, Blinkit, uh, what portion of our dark stores are our own versus franchisees? And how do you manage inventory in a scenario where non-grocery SKUs are increasing, uh, where the frequency of sales will be lower? Is it the third party sellers that are taking the inventory risk for us? Uh, and uh, do we have more dedicated sellers or these are sellers which will be selling on other platforms as well? So Ashwin, on the first part, I think the the breakup ratio of you know uh, own versus partner is roughly the same. I think it has been historically. So we operate roughly half of our stores, and a partner operate operate uh, half of the other stores. Uh, on the uh, you know as we are increasing more and more categories, I think uh, you know part of our job is to also find the sellers and also convince the sellers to be able to take the risk to sell 
higher margin but long tail products which have a lower frequency right so uh, that is something that we negotiate with the sellers that are on the platform what kind of risks are they taking what kind of data we can actually provide them to give them the comfort to to actually invest behind these long tail categories uh, so so far we have not seen a meaningful change in risk profile for our sellers either uh, even when they are expanding into uh, lower margin categories partly because we also help figure out with the brands uh, what should be the terms of trade that make the entire business viable for them even if the mix of non grocery products is increasing okay uh, thanks arbinder just one more in terms of uh, say ad monetization as a percentage of gov on linkit uh, approximate sense on where we are and given that transaction models are gaining traction from an advertising perspective uh, uh, where do you see uh, a potential possibility of this going so i don't think we are uh, providing any uh, guidance on sort of what percentage of our revenue is coming from ads uh, however like it mentioned in the letter a couple of quarters ago that you know we do have a programmatic uh, ad bidding platform on blinkit which is used by most of the uh, brands that are operating on the platform and it's a self serve model uh, and i think uh, you know that is a performance uh, you know performance marketing driven model which uh, we think in the long run aligns with the fact that brand spends are also going to move to bottom of the funnel and more transaction rate Okay. Uh, fair enough. All the best and thank. You. Question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ms. Garima Mishra from Kotak. Please go ahead. Sir, thank you so much for the opportunity. I again had a question on the transacting user base. Now you cited the five to six percent QOQ increase in transacting users, and it seems to have been aided by gold. now logically pace of attachment to zomato gold over time should slow down so do you think even in that scenario this 5 to 6% qoq growth in tus should be maintained like i mean it's a very specific question garima like overall uh you know if you take a longer term view on this i mean q on q is hard to say but i think the longer term a uh, view on growth as we mentioned in the letter in response to another question also is that majority of the growth should be driven by growth in mtu uh, or or mtc as we calling it monthly transacting customers uh given uh, the fact that our current monthly user base is much smaller than the annual transacting user base now i think the pace of that change uh, i don't think is going to be linear uh, there will be periods of time when uh, either because of demographic change or incomes going up uh, or macro changes uh, you know this frequency will increase and there could be period of consolidation where we just sort of M- mtcs might flatline a little bit uh, so i think that is very hard to predict um, uh, and and there is sort of no floor there in terms of at least uh, uh, you know what i mean there's no floor in terms of a minimum number there right but i think overall uh, our view long term is that mtc should compound from here on and that Should drive majority of the order volume growth from here. Okay. Uh, second question: Basis, you know, your uh, intelligence and understanding. Where are you in terms of market share in the food delivery business? We have no point of view on that. I think it's a highly competitive market, so very hard to measure market share. Understood. Okay. Third question. Uh, and you know i'm quoting this from the shareholders letter so eventually we care more about growth in absolute contribution profit rather than contribution margin so are you somewhere indicating that at 6.5 6.6% these margins are good and uh, basically you let this margin be and focus on growth no i don't think we are saying that So then, how should we interpret this statement? I mean, it's a theoretical statement, right? I mean, we are not saying what you are saying. I think that's a deduction. Uh, uh, margins, we think. I mean, we have uh, in the past guided that uh, we want uh, to get to four to five percent better margins in this business, which translate to more than what we have in terms of contribution margin right now, right? So we would look to expand the margins, but I think like basic corporate finance says that. 
eventually at some point uh you know the roi on every dollar that you spend on uh increasing the size of your profit pool should make sense right so in which case the margins may or may not go down and that's the only point we are saying got it that's helpful thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen in the interest of time we will now take the last one to two questions the next question is from the line of mr adit pesoman from clsa please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening so just one question for me uh, i mean if you think of uh, quick commerce versus food delivery i think uh, we all understand that the overall market addressable market in quick commerce is much larger uh, but uh, on the competitive dynamic uh, would you also say that's a lot easier given that in a lot of uh, pin codes basically uh, you could be the only player and and even uh, would that be a fair statement to say that the competitive dynamic is much easier and and likely to stay easier or or that is incorrect we don't think so that because we also will have uh, neighborhoods where there will be four or five quick commerce players operating uh, and not only that you know we are uh, you know there's also the larger players like amazon that we have to deal with so i think you know uh, i think that subjective whether we would say that the competitive dynamic is is easier uh, in the quick commerce business i don't I don't think that is true, and we would also not want to operate as if that is true. Fair enough. No, uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, and and in terms of uh, benchmarking, so uh, uh, in in again, I mean, uh, in food delivery, it's fairly obvious uh, who you who you could benchmark to or or not. Or not. But uh, uh, would you say? in quick commerce as you mentioned i mean as you uh, you could benchmark to everybody from uh, a direct quick commerce competitors to amazon to uh, reliance or whoever so i don't think we benchmark to anybody because there are you know you could take a different point of view and start uh, moving your business to that side i think we are the category creators in this business we are the largest quick commerce player and i think it is our job to actually create this market so i don't think benchmarking to a uh, existing heuristic makes sense because that will make us skew our business towards that heuristic which uh, we would rather be the inventors in the category rather than benchmarking ourselves to somebody else fair enough perfect uh, that answers my questions thank you thank you thank you next question is from the line of mr samarth patel from aquira securities please go ahead Mr. Samad, are you there? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my first question is regarding Blinkit. Uh, so there is thirty-five percent quarter-on-quarter quarter increase in fixed cost. Uh, could you give some idea between uh, brand marketing and cost associated with employee addition and wage increment, and how this uh, relates to our dark store network expansion strategy in medium term? I think this is mostly the base effect of uh, disruptions in the previous quarter. Uh, so there were some fixed costs that we didn't have to bear because uh, we were not operating for uh, a week or so, and you know, there were disruptions in the business for a longer period of time. So that's why you're seeing that increase. But uh, the levels that we are at right now, like these are the actual fixed cost level that we generally operate at. Okay, and uh, would we be adding more employees uh, for the dark store expansion uh, in the Blinkit side of things? I think we kind of have to, uh, but that's uh, above the contribution. Okay, okay, got it. And the uh, uh, second question is related to the uh, question that uh, previous participant asked. So we have uh, been implementing aggressive pricing strategy for Somato Gold membership uh, in this quarter uh, uh, in response to the competitive pricing. Uh, uh, so, can you just give? Uh, can you just elaborate on the uh, strategy behind this? And uh, we expect our funding gap to narrow down at a contribution level. Uh, so, those are two contra things, right? Uh, on one side, uh, we are uh, we have been aggressive in terms of pricing, and we expect our funding gap to narrow down at a contribution level from the Zomato code. So, your yeah, thoughts? Yeah. Not so that one is past and one is future. I think that's the difference. so what we are saying uh, is that from here on we we expect that uh, uh, the delta between a gold and a non gold order in terms of margin should reduce right past could be different uh, and i think it's just like a 5 6 month old program right so uh, it's i think there's also a process i mean more than competition there's also a process of 
figuring out what is the right way to price the service at that depends on the value that the customer sees uh, in this product. So, you know, I think we believe that we have a fair handle on that now. And hence, uh, we could be uh, more sharper in, in terms of pricing more effectively going forward. Those were my questions. Uh, thank you for uh, taking it and uh, best of luck for the future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conclude this conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.